welcome back to my channel or if you're new here my name's Alexa Ray and welcome to another video I'm so happy to be here I'm so glad you're all here for today's video we're going to be doing the mid-year freak out book tag I'm so freaking excited for this I've seen so many people do this in the past I've seen so many people do it this year and I'm so excited to actually be a part of it this year last year I wasn't enough of a book channel to do this so I'm really just so excited to to be doing it today for you guys, the mid-year book freak out tag. This is going to be so much fun. We're gonna go through all the books that I've read so far this year. I'm so proud of myself. My goal for the year of 2022 is to read a total of 50 books. I have read a total of 27 books. According to Goodreads, I am about like three or four books ahead of schedule. So I'm hoping that maybe we can get over the 50 mark this year and maybe read like a few more than 50. We've read 27 books so far this year. 27 amazing, great books. I have read some really good books this year and I'm really excited to share them with you. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. He's purring so loud. Can you hear it? I feel like my mic won't pick it up, but he's been sleeping all day long. I thought we'd start off with going through my book stats for the year so far. And I'm using the app Storygraph to look at all my stats, which is what everyone else seems to be using. And so far in the year of 2022, I've read a total of 27 books and 9,117 pages. My most read mood is emotional and... <laughs> I'm not surprised. I read a lot of Colleen Hoover books on my channel. So they're very emotional reads if you're familiar with them. My second most read mood is lighthearted. And then it looks like it's a tie between sad and funny. I feel like that's pretty on point for me. I'm a huge romance reader on my channel. My most read genres are romance, contemporary, young adult, and mystery. And my most read authors, of course, Colleen Hoover, Jenny Han, Jennifer Lynn Barnes, and Taylor Jenkins Reid. These are my favorite authors currently. I have read a lot Lot of books by all of them this year so my average rating for a book is 4.15 stars which I feel like it's pretty fitting I really love reading I really love books and it's really hard for me to dislike a book and give a book a really bad rating I love books I rarely find a book that I don't like so those are my stats for mid-year 2022 I'm really excited to share all these books with you if you're new to my channel I have done reading vlogs for every book I'm about to show you so if you see a book in this video that you kind of want more info on more more of a review, more opinions on. Definitely go check out my recent videos because I've done a reading vlog for every single book I'm about to show you. There's book reviews, reading vlogs, there's themed reading vlogs, there's book hauls, all that fun stuff. So definitely go check out those videos if you're interested. I'm gonna try and keep it short and sweet because like I said, I do have reading vlogs for all these books on my channel already. My hopes for this video is that you're able to take some new books away from it and enjoy them yourself. So we're gonna start from the top with the books that I started with this year and we'll work our way up to now. First book that I read this year and the first book that started my Colleen Hoover addiction, It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. This is such a huge book talk book. Still even now, everyone is just reading it. Everyone's raving about it. This is starting the coho addiction for so many of us. This book was such a whirlwind of emotions for me. I was not expecting any of it. It absolutely broke my heart, shattered my heart. Probably never recover from this book. This is the first coho book I ever read and and it's one that I just will never forget. Like I said, this began my coho obsession. I loved it. I thought it was such a good read. I was so sucked in that I read this in like one sitting because I just couldn't stop reading it. And now I am forever obsessed with Colleen Hoover. But nonetheless, it was really beautiful. I enjoyed it. I'm really excited for book two to come out in September. After it ends with us and becoming obsessed with coho, I immediately went to the bookstore and picked up more Colleen Hoover books. The next one I read is All Your Perfects. I was immediately immediately drawn to the cover. I love the shade of purple. I love the daisy and the flower petals. I thought it was so beautiful. This story goes between then and now and it tells the story of Quinn and Graham. I don't know how she does it. I don't know where she comes up with these stories. They are just insane though and I'm here for it. I absolutely was obsessed with this one. Basically just tells the story of Quinn and Graham trying to navigate their love life later on in time after they've been together for so long. I feel like so many people go through what they go through in this story. This is another great coho read. I 
then took a break from Colleen Hoover because I wanted to try out some other book talk reads and I wound up reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book then began my obsession with Taylor Jenkins Reid. I love her characters and I love her writing style. It's such a crazy and intense read, but it's also such an easy read, which I really appreciate. We watch Evelyn Hugo rise to stardom in retro Hollywood. We go through the seven husbands that she marries along the way while also trying to uncover her one true love as well as trying to figure out the big mystery in it, which is Monique Grant. It's a really crazy read. It's one that definitely tugged at my heartstrings. I thought this was absolutely worth the hype. A lot of people disagree. I thought it was amazing. I gave it a five star rating. Immediately after that, I went back to Colin Hoover because I couldn't, I couldn't help myself guys, okay? Next up, I read Ugly Love. This book ruined my life. Ugly Love was such a crazy read. A lot of people say they don't like it. I thought this was a really good character development story and I really appreciated watching the characters grow together and changing in the end. Again, Colleen Hoover has the craziest plot twist. That's why I went back to her book because her plot twists just really suck you in and you just want to keep reading them because they just keep getting better, honestly. Ugly Love tells the story of Tate Collins and Miles Archer. This was a five-star read for me. It became my favorite Coho book of the year at the time. With that being said, I immediately went to another Coho book, Verity. This was a thriller mystery romance. This was a crazy one, okay? Verity tells the story of Lowen Ashley. She's a struggling writer and she winds up taking over finishing up a very big novel for Verity Crawford. We also have Jeremy Crawford who is the husband of Verity Crawford. It was a weird, weird story. I thought it was really interesting but it was also a little bit too twisted for me. It was the first like thriller mystery I read. I didn't go into it with high hopes and maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it that much but I am trying to branch out outside of romance. I'm trying to get into mystery thriller reads so that's why I thought this would be the perfect start. Next up we have another Colleen Hoover book. I'm so sorry. I promise we start to branch out later in the year. November 9th by Colleen Hoover. This became a favorite for me right away. I thought this was such a cool and fascinating story. It tells the story of Fallon and Ben. They meet right before Fallon is about to move across the country and they instantly have like this connection. So they wind up coming to an agreement to meet every year on November 9th at the same place. That's basically what the story revolves around. Every year becomes trickier. Life just throws the craziest things at them. And then of course the crazy plot twist, which shook me. It is in the same universe as Ugly Love. So we do see Tate and Miles pop up in this very briefly. And I thought that was so cool. I really loved that aspect of it. This was a five-star read for me. I absolutely loved it. It's still one of my favorite Coho books till this day. After that one, I finally decided to branch out, try something new I decided to try a book talk book and this was the first book that I read in the year that I didn't like people we meet on vacation by Emily Henry this book seemed like such a fun and exciting read two best friends that go on summer vacations with each other they slowly fall in love it's a friends to lovers trope I wanted to love this so much I couldn't get into it I couldn't get into her writing style I thought it was really boring bland slow the characters were also just just like really boring to me. When I finally finished it, I was so happy to be done with it. And since then, I haven't read another Emily Henry book. And I do hear Beat Treat is really good. I hear Book Lovers, her newest book is amazing. But then again, I do hear people say the opposite, that they're not good and her writing style is just not for them. So I personally haven't given her another try yet just because I've been really nervous and hesitant. I am hoping to give her another chance later on. The next book I read really made up for people we meet on vacation. This is one of my favorite books of the year. It is The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. This was beautiful. I absolutely was obsessed with this. I finished this book and I didn't know how to go back to normal life because I was so deep in this world that I didn't know what to do with myself. Something else I did find out after reading this was that it's supposed to be like a Kylo Ren and Rey fanfic, which I don't know how I didn't pick up on that when I was reading this, but come on. That looks like Adam Driver. And we basically basically get like the fake dating trope in this. I thought their story was just really fun. Again, I love the school setting. I love the fake dating trope. I love how protective Adam Carlson was over Olive Smith. I gave this a five star read. It's one of my favorite romance books of the year and I could not recommend this enough to people. Like this is such a good read. Next up we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. This was the second mystery slash thriller book I read aside from Colleen Hoover's Verity. Blew me away. I really enjoyed it. It really got me 
in to like mystery thrillers. Kip is basing her senior project on the tragedy that happened at her high school a few years prior. It's just crazy because she's basically uncovering the truth behind this tragedy and someone is trying to prevent that. This was the perfect stepping stone, the perfect in-between. I really enjoyed this. And we're back on the Colleen Hoover Road with reminders of him. I read Ugly Love and I was absolutely obsessed. It became my favorite book. I then read November 9th. It became my favorite book. Then I read this and my life was ruined. This was amazing. This is a five-star read. I just really enjoyed the mother-daughter aspect in this. I really loved the romance between Kenna and Ledger. Ledger's loyalty to Kenna's daughter is just so beautiful. Another really fantastic Colleen Hoover book that I would recommend to anyone who's looking to get into her. Next up, I read Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. This was recently turned in to a Netflix film and I'm so disappointed. So disappointed. This tells the story of Lena. Lena's mother's wish is to go to Italy and do the things that she did when she was her age, spend time with her friend Howard, and her mother leaves behind this journal, and Lena basically is trying to uncover the truth behind her biological father. It's just a really cool story about Lena traveling around Italy, trying to figure out the truth about her life and her family, finding love, and just being in Italy. It's such a fun and cute story. This is a really cute book, and I think it's a really great summer read. Next up, we have The Viscount Who Loved Me by Julie. Julia Quinn, I read this immediately after season two of Bridgerton came out. If you are not familiar with my channel, early 2021 when Bridgerton first came out, I actually did a huge Bridgerton clothing haul. It was the first video on my channel to actually like blow up, I guess. And I was just obsessed with the entire show. I love that we're watching the Bridgerton family navigate life, trying to find love. Unfortunately, I am one of the few people I think who enjoys the show more than the books because within the show, they kind of put together everyone's story at once whereas in the books we only focus on one Bridgerton at a time it is an enemies to lovers romance that's why I loved it so much I just think the show portrayed it a little bit better than the books do the next three books I read none other than the summer I turn pretty trilogy by Jenny Han this was recently turned into an Amazon Prime TV show I really like how they changed it to be a little bit more modern than what the books were these are such fun summer reads such fun beach reads this tells the story of belly and how she spends every summer at Cousins Beach with her mother's best friend Susanna and her two sons, Jeremiah and Conrad. Belly has always been in love with Conrad. The main idea of it is this love triangle between Belly and two brothers, Conrad and Jeremiah. I really enjoyed the books. I thought they were really fun. Next up, we have The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This started such a crazy obsession for me. I say it every time I talk about this series. I really hope they make a show or a film or something. I am obsessed with this story. I'm obsessed with the characters. The storyline is insane. Grayson and Jameson, like, what? Like The Summer I Turn Pretty, this is a love triangle between Avery Graham, Jameson, and Grayson Hawthorne. Avery Graham inherits this insane fortune from Tobias Hawthorne. Nobody knows why. Nobody knows why he left her everything and not his own family. So this whole story is basically them trying to figure out why Tobias Hawthorne left Avery virtually everything. If you like mysteries, this is such a great book, but if you love romances and you're a heavy romance reader like myself, this is still such a good book because they have that little hint of romance in it and it's like the perfect amount to keep you sucked in so really enjoyed this book I loved it so much third one is coming out in late August and I'm so so excited for it next up we have the OG book talk book the song of Achilles by Madeline Miller I was very disappointed with this read I could not get into it it was a slow read for me it was one of those reads where I couldn't I couldn't get into it and I didn't want to finish it but I forced myself to finish it and get through it it tells the story of Achilles and Patroclus it is essentially a romance story. I did enjoy it. I thought the story was beautiful. I just didn't like the writing style in it. And I have been told that the audiobook for this is amazing. And I should give the audiobook a shot. Because the names are Greek and it's so difficult to pronounce them, I think that's why I couldn't get into this so much. Next up, we have Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This was wow. Something I really love about Taylor Jenkins Reid is that it truly really makes you feel as the reader like you're in that time period. Daisy Jones 
Jones and the Six tells the story of Daisy Jones, who is a singer in the 70s, and the Six, a very popular band in the 70s. It really goes through all depths of the band and what they go through, what it was like living in the 70s, what it was like touring in the 70s, and I thought it was a really fun and exciting read. I think Daisy and Billy are amazing. Their character development is beautiful, and we've quickly come full circle to another Coho book. This is Regretting You by Colleen Hoover. This was a really cool and different read because it's a mother-daughter perspective read. So we go between mother and daughter in the book. Essentially, we're getting one big life story, but also getting two separate romances. We're watching the daughter fall in love, but we're also watching the mother fall in love. I say it with every Coho book, but I just don't know how else to describe her books. Her plot twists are literally mind-blowing, and I just... I don't know. Following that, I read Confess, also by Colleen Hoover, and this became my favorite Coho book very quickly. This is still currently my favorite Coho book. I'm obsessed with this. A lot of you have told me that this is actually a show on something. I can't remember, but they did make a show out of this book, and I need to check it out immediately because this is my favorite Coho book. This tells the story of Auburn and Owen. Owen is an artist. Auburn is trying to get on her feet again. This is such a beautiful, beautiful beautiful story. The fact that it revolves around art is so cool to me. This is one of my favorite romances and I think it's just so beautifully written. The characters are so beautiful and how they come together. This was a five-star read for me and I'm still obsessed with it honestly. Like it's just so good. Next up we have The Hawthorne Legacy which is the second book in the Inheritance Game series. This was nothing short of amazing. This was equally as amazing if not better better than the first one. The storyline was just as crazy and intense as the first one and we basically continue the story of Avery Grams and the Hawthorne. I keep saying it but I just have this crazy feeling that in the third and final book we are going to have the craziest plot twist especially between this love triangle. We're gonna see something flip and I'm really excited for it. I'm here for it but this was absolutely amazing such a crazy mystery guys it's so it's so freaking good after that i read archer's voice by mia sheridan this ruined my life it totally destroyed me favorite read of 2022 so far it's my favorite romance of 2022 so far so many feelings so many emotions with this book it is not what i expected going into this i couldn't believe the outcome of it i thought the story was so beautiful literally shook me to my core i've never cried reading a book. Until I read this book, I literally sobbed like a little baby. Mia Sheridan is such a good storyteller. She writes the best characters. This book almost gave me like a coho feel. It gave me the same vibe. It's one of the top 100 romance novels of all time on Goodreads, which I absolutely believe and agree with. This was a five-star read for me, and it is currently my favorite book of the year. Next up, we have Kisses and Croissants by Anne-Sophie Johanna. This is a cutie European romance. It gives me love and gelato vibes. And this tells the story of Mia. She goes to Paris for a summer ballet program. The story revolves around her doing ballet and also trying to uncover this family secret. I really enjoyed this and the ballet aspect. I thought it was really beautiful and by the end of it, I wanted to be like a ballerina. So... And then of course we have Louis who is her love interest and Louis shows her all around Paris. I thought this was such a cute and adorable book. I did very much enjoy it. Again, it gives me love and gelato vibes, Anna and the French kiss vibes. European love stories are my weakness and I love that. I found the last few chapters of this book to just be unnecessary. They weren't needed and I think they really ruined the story. This book was adorable and perfect without those few chapters. Still a very cute read. I think it's a really great summer read because it takes place in Paris in the summer and it's absolutely gorgeous. I would still recommend this because I thought it was a very sweet read. I just personally wasn't a big fan of the ending. Next up, we have Hopeless by Colleen Hoover. I was obsessed with it. I don't see too much about this anywhere and going into it, I was a bit hesitant and nervous because I haven't seen a lot of people talk about this one, but this one is definitely one of my favorite
favorite coho books it was so different from her other ones i don't know why it just hit different and i really really loved and enjoyed this one it tells the story of a girl named sky and dean holder they basically are drawn to each other and every minute sky spends with holder she basically starts to remember things from her past and the whole story is about them uncovering the truth behind sky's past and her family i think it's underrated and underhyped so i definitely recommend it again it was a five star read and it's definitely one of my favorite coho reads next up we have heart bones another colleen hoover book i'm so sorry i feel like most of these books are colleen hoover books i've read most of her books this year heart bones by colleen hoover this was a huge book wreck on my channel a lot of you say this is like one of your favorite coho books this tells the story of Bea and samson Bea comes from nothing samson comes from everything they basically have a summer fling and all this crazy stuff happens and secrets come out and it's just craziest plot twist guys she has the craziest plot twist this is such a fun summer read and beach read i thought the story was really beautiful and i enjoyed the characters i just personally didn't enjoy the plot twist in this one i just don't like how it ended up it was really disappointing for me and i really enjoyed the characters i thought samson was so sweet and i really liked the character development between the two i just didn't like the major plot twist in it i also feel like the ending was very rushed still a really good read and i definitely would recommend this one to people who are in the coho world who love coho books next up we have maybe someday another colleen hoover book this one follows the story of sydney and ridge ridge is a musician in a band and he basically asked sydney to help him write music with him it's a really cool story colleen hoover actually co-wrote this with a musician there's an actual album out there with songs from the book you're supposed to listen to the album in order of the songs appearing in the book and it was a really cool touch i really enjoyed that aspect of this and i do think sydney and ridge's relationship was really fun and cool to watch but it wasn't my favorite it's just not my favorite trope in a book i don't know i just i'm just not into that type of trope and if you've read this book you know what i mean again i think the ending was really weird i feel like a lot happened very quickly in the end she kind of cut the story short in a way immediately after reading this one i went in and read maybe not which is the second book in the series it's a novella so it was very short only 100 pages this tells the story of bridget and warren who are the side characters and maybe someday warren is ridge's best friend and band manager and bridget is the real and it basically tells the story of Warren and Bridget. This was really fun because I think Warren is such a fun and funny character. So I really enjoyed seeing more of him in this. Book was mostly like a lot of spice and not a lot of explanation. So, okay guys, that is all for my mid-year freak out book tag. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to take away some new and fun books from this. If there's books in here that you have read, let me know down below which ones are your favorite, which ones you love, which ones you don't love. I did go through the books pretty quickly so if you did see one in there that you wanted more detail on wanted more of like a book review on definitely go check out my previous videos because i've done reading vlogs on every single book i shared with you today i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was super fun being able to be a part of it this year and be able to share with you guys the books i've read so far this year super super excited we read a total of 27 books so far this year we're three books ahead of schedule did the 50 book goal at the end of the year i think we can do it i think we might even surpass the 50 book mark if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up because it really helps me out and it lets me know that you like these types of videos you like my book reviews my reading vlogs my bookstore vlogs all that super fun book content and then of course don't forget to subscribe down below if you'd like to see more of me because i post weekly guys i post weekly it's basically free entertainment every single week so you might as well subscribe i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you in my next video